There he is. He's from a land where you gotta be two something to do something, but he looks more three something so he could be something. You know, I think I'll be the first one ever gonna be on tonight, Chris. That he's over 300 pounds? Yes. Okay, good. Maybe this won't be such a long night. Captain Penn was quite the track record since making his, his debut almost three years ago now. Has it been that long? He's just assimilated into the roster and into the locker room so well that you're right. He's done quite well for himself. Big man. Great offense. Uh -oh. Roger, Roger, Commander Roger. Only one man is allowed to touch my gear. This handsome fella here. Here you go, handsome. Ladies and gentlemen, you already know I'm the one you bought a ticket to see. Welcome to the captain ship. Now I come from land. Where you gotta be to something, to do something. Oh, I heard it. I heard it. She's with me. So it's time to drop this thick boy. You can come home with a thick boy. Welcome home, Daddy! Whoa, big cartwheel! Oh, there's his own cartwheel! Well, I mean, he's got a little less. He's got. Captain's got 100 pounds or more on Tamir. I don't think it's a fair fight. Well, then it should be even easier for Tamir to cartwheel. He should have done three or four cartwheels. Captain is practically two and a half to I, I would say so. Man, you Americans, you'll use anything but metric. Very interesting matchup here tonight. Well, Tim and is an interesting place. You set out Captain Emmett Payne, been around for three years now, a lot of accolades, a lot of great things. Tim and is no slouch either. Rookie of the year. And he had his whole rookie year when he was rookie of the year. And he's had this whole year of 2023 since then. 2023 is winding down. Tamir needs something. He either needs guidance. Maybe he needs a tag partner. Maybe he needs a championship. He might need something to break out of his current plateau. And I think a win over a much bigger opponent would be a great start. Oh, absolutely. But, but, but let's not forget, Tim Tamir has been the only competitor to win a heavyweight champion, John Tyler. That's true. The uncrowned. If it was a non-title match, but if it was, we would have had a new champion. The uncrowned ECPW heavyweight. Oh! Yeah. Captain makes in no time just bullying the smaller competitor. Yeah, but have you been close to Tamir? He's got that face that you can't help but bully. Well, well I've had quite a few. In so do you, so do you actually, for that matter. You know, you're you're an easy target. You're like the you're the Del Griffith of ECPW. Well, you unlike so many in our Jersey locker room have actually had that opportunity. Yeah. Or maybe you're more like the Peter Griffin. Uh, I'm not sure. Please don't sue us. We're not. Up to the line. Oh. oh. A block and a slap. Oh. oh and a slap of the big. Now that's smart. Those forearms are like getting hit with the great ones in the air. Matrix action. Oh, wow. <laughs> like a little spear. <laughs> a lawn dart. Right into the mid section. Up and over. Into the mid Up the line. Duck his back elbow. Hit on, Camarana. Come out of his shell a little bit. What? Uh oh. I think he was going for a monkey flip. He didn't get it. Just shove him down. Got all of that, though. <laughs> and referee Waterboy puts his fist in the air. What does that mean? Down with the nation of domination? Is that it? No. I, I mean, I suppose. I don't know. He's, he's, he's a very weird pop player. After a big body slam by Captain Emmett Payne, that's his statement. Uh, don't buy the news. You know him better than I do. I don't call him, I just call him sir. I don't really talk to him much. He doesn't like... 
know, either way, Tim Tamir is fighting for Bubba, trying to fight his way out. Doing his best. You, you, you know, it's so hard to relaunch your offense once you've been grounded like this. It's so hard to do anything after you've been hit by a 300 pound man, full blast in your chest. That wasn't even a full blast, that was like a quarter blast. Speaking of which, to me it sounded like a hollow log after that slide. Wow. The East VW crowd showing off thinking out the five. Very impressive. Ouch. An interesting maneuver there by Captain Payne did a certain job on Timmy Tamir. Oh. Almost a three. Tamir, why'd you kick out? You're only going to get more of that. It's a beautiful thing to open up the con to be the opening contest. You can go home after this, Tamir. Come on. All you have to do is stay down. Ouch. Oh. Wow. Wow. Captain is just vicious here tonight. And, and, and I think he's making eyes at a new camera girl over there. Oh. Well, compared to the rest of the women here, you know, she's probably the most beautiful woman here, which it's a low bar. Being the smartest stooge. Up. I know a certain residential redneck who take offense to that. I complimented her. I insulted everyone else. My insults are by volume, kid. I think he's trying to wake himself up. The crowd's behind Tamir. Oh! Big drop kick right to the chin. This is the second one. Those drop kicks are like a brick to your face. Oh. Captain said wheeling into the corner. Nice. Well, you don't become rookie of the year by accident, especially in one of the ooh, one of the absolute busiest rookie classes there ever was. Was that three? I thought that was three. The past two years were the most competitive rookie classes I'd ever seen. Tamir won two years ago, and last year was Corazon and Beef Todd. We couldn't even pick a single rookie of the year. Whoa, what is this? Manages to take him down any he could. Kick out at two. Wow. I thought that would have had him. That was enough shock and that was enough impact to put a big man down like that. What is this now? The Timid Train, the T-Train! About to come to the end of the ring, we have from Eastern Pennsylvania, weighs his height at 185 pounds, he is the intellectual interpreter, J.J. Smith. being orange, that type of thing, you know, yeah, you know, uh, it looks like it is for him, 
Looks pretty committed, but I gotta say, when I saw the lineup, J.J. Smith sounds more like a college quarterback than a uh, intellectual, intellectual interpreter, whatever he's gonna interpret for us. So we know Frankie Flo is from Puerto Rico. He speaks Spanish. Maybe we need an interpreter for Frankie Flo. Maybe that's why he's here in ECBW. What's he gonna do? Beat me up again? You know how many times I've been beat up by Frankie Flo? It's all scar tissue now. Maybe he knows what he's up against because he seems to be no, in no rush to get into the ring. Well, keep in mind, this is his first time coming out here. Could be his last time, too. Might want to get his money's worth. He's uh, uh, trying to make sure that he can just memorize all the faces. Very few of the faces here are worth memorizing. a few tricks of the trade. As, as, as far as being awareness, being smart, combat IQ, Frankie's up there with the best. JJ Watt has his uh, work cut out for him today. He's not my companion. I'm getting a little, uh, little nervous now seeing Frankie in person. Actually, he's looking at like former ECBW junior wrestler, Mad Dog. That's a shout out for the uh, Linger Longer crowd. I think Mad Dog came back. He went to college. But he's doing well for himself. I think I agree with the mob. Frankie doesn't like that he's going to have to go all the way over there. Frankie doesn't want to take too many steps. I can't blame him. I empathize. Frankie's trying to get his competitor in the ring. Feel like I had a birthday watching this match. Ooh! He hit him with a book. Oh, and a DDT. Is that it? That could be it. start to this contest. Yeah, well, it's a peculiar contest. Going to work on the coconut of Frankie Flo. I think this guy broke some of the strangest punches I've ever seen. Very uh, hooked. Didn't quite get all of it on that drop kick. Oh, that wasn't too bad, though. But it wasn't enough for the three. Certainly I'd be trying to get the element of surprise on Frankie. Oh, but you can't leave it like that. You can't win it out there, kid. Unless he's out there with you. Get back in the ring and finish the job. I mean, you have Frankie Floyd on his back. Doesn't this guy know anything? You can't argue with that many people who are in red baseball caps. Doesn't matter what it says on the baseball caps. That many red baseball caps, they're wrong. Let's go with that. <laughs> Of the intellectual going up top. Oof. Not a very smart maneuver. 
The glasses stayed on though, I'm impressed. Yep, now it's feeding time. It's over. Oh, the Samoan. Well, it was quick. What book is it? I might want to read it. Is it Todd Gordon's book? I was wanting to read that one. Oh, no. The following contest is for the number one contender to the TV title, and it is a three-way dance. Yeah. Entering first, from the Sands of Death Road, he weighs his right at 220 pounds, he is the Revolver, Alex Ryman. One of my stranger pals, Alex Ryman. You know, I mean, I've one of his matches a couple of weeks ago. He's been with Darn Power. And I'm hoping to not have another 15 minutes of small hands time. I'll give you five. Well, there they are. I don't know if you can see them. I hope your camera lady zoomed in on that. Ryman's been after this TV title for a very long time, and I do think he would make a great ECBW TV champion, but he's got his work cut out for him tonight in this three-way dance. This is going to be a tremendous time. Hells from where he says is somewhere much, much better than Richfield Park. Weighing tonight at 225 pounds, Mega Marcos. Local monster, Mega Marcos. Marcos has built himself into quite the machine. He is. He is in tremendous shape. He's young, he's vicious, and also one of the few competitors who can rival Alex Ryman as far as sheer violence and blood force goes. No, I think what he lacks in Alex is violence and force. He makes up for in brute strength and brutality. They're apples and oranges, but they're both effective. Their opponent, Hells from Zombieland! Weighing a tiny 175 pounds, he is the Zombie King, Junior Arguably the best athlete in ECPW today for my money. I've been in the ring with almost everybody in that locker room and Junior Flo will always surprise you. I've been wrestling Junior Flo since he was 17 years old. That was 15 years ago almost. Second match, yes. Second match. And, and how has he grown since 
Well, physically, he's grown. The muscles have only gotten larger. His strength has gotten more. He was a little string bean when he first started, but he always had that quickness. He always had that instinct. Just like his father, that instinct made the flows very effective. Alex, Ryan is trying to make an alliance. Oh, and where did it get him? It's <laughs> taking him out immediately. I told you, Ryan, you can't reason with anybody. Just explosive violence. I think we have a one-on-one -on -one contest at the moment. Ryan looks like he's in some real pain out there. Oh, he looks like he ate too many empanadas. Ooh. Whoa! What a banana! Kick to the midsection. Whoa! Can't forget about Ryman. Oh, and you don't want to be outside the ring with Ryman. That's his, his primary residence is out there. Oh, that's the power we talked about. It's not going to be over that easy. Now you're going to need to do some real damage to a guy the size of Marco. You maybe back over your car with him, something like that. Then maybe you got a chance. Wow! Nice picture perfect drop kick after Ryman. Now you're talking about the violence and the brutality of Ryman, but don't forget, he might be one of the best pure wrestlers we've also got in our locker room. He will wear you down. Ryman spends so much time trying to just brutalize his, his opponents that many people don't know that he is a very accomplished technical competitor. I would say one of the best we've got. Like him or not, and he is a little wacky. It's a little scary sometimes. Whoop. I think he's just trying to show God Jr. I that he just wants to hit somebody with a suplex. I'm sure he will. Boom. Swung to the midsection. Oh, out he goes again. Ooh. Ouch. Throwing some haymakers. How many impacts to the head do you think they can take? They can take more. Whoa! Oh, they scouted that. They caught him. Don't get this done. Oh, please. Oh, skull meets skull. Nice. This is what I was talking about, Junior Flo. Always so full of surprises. Big beat of the chin. Good night. We almost had a new number one contender. Here's that suplex he wanted. Wow. Tremendous strength. Almost a three. Junior Bell got oh wait. Now we got a sleeper from the applied. Wow, sleep drag. Right into the turnbuckle. You can't, German Marcos. Maybe you can't. Ouch. Now this is where the frustration comes out. This is where he's at his most dangerous. He's like angry Ryman's a dangerous guy. I'll go a step further than angry. He's foul. He's foul when he's frustrated. As a decapitation clothesline. Big right hand. The best way to get Junior Flo off the top is to make sure he doesn't get up there in the first place. But you gotta get him before he's all the way up there. Ryan staying on top of him. Ooh. Big headbutt. Junior felt that one. With this could be his opportunity. He's feeling it off from the crowd. He's up top. Frog splash. He's stealing the win! That's it! Marcos gets it! It's stolen! My kind of guy!